One of the biggest lessons in relationships is all about ourselves, how we treat ourselves and then how that affects how others treat us. One of the biggest lessons is for us to learn to grow through relationship anxiety. You might think that you are constantly feeling worried. Maybe you are biting your nails all the time. If so, it could be a sign of anxiety in your relationships. And there's a lot more going on at a deeper level that if you do display these anxious signs, it's gonna make people lose their attraction for you. And the big kicker here is lots of anxious behaviors that we display in our relationship is enabled by our friends and the media. So we would have no idea that what we were actually doing that was anxious was causing a problem. So let's dive in and look at the many different signs of anxiety that are sabotaging your relationships. Like and subscribe. You find that you are afraid of getting close. Maybe you've been cheated on in the past, you've been mistreated by an ex or even abused by a parent or family member. If you have had to sadly deal with something like that, then being mistreated is a common thing that's always activated for you. Your trust has been broken and you take this hurt into every relationship until you actively work on it in therapy. Now, a lot of people want to be in relationships but hold themselves back. They may start petty arguments to keep their partner at arm's length, or refuse intimacy to avoid the partner getting close. Not investing in their VIPs. Your partner's friends and family are special to them. It doesn't matter if you pick out their negative traits, they are still your partner's important people. So if you try to not engage with these people, if you are avoiding meetups and you are not willing to engage in conversation with them, well, it's a sign that your anxiety is getting the better of you. When you do these behaviors, it's actually self-sabotaging and you probably never realized. Now it could be deep down, you think that these people will see your flaws and then tell your partner and then your partner's like, oh no, this person's no good for me. Maybe you're too anxious to interact with them as you don't have a solid friendship or family unit yourself and this is all new to you. Now, of course, therapy is the answer here and opening up to your partner. If you were to continue to not engage with these important people, well, they will eventually grow to dislike you and this can make your partner not want to continue the relationship and therefore you have self-sabotaged the relationship. You are too available. Have you found that in a relationship, you put your partner on a pedestal? You don't see your friends as often, and by default, you assume every weekend is all about spending time together with your partner. Maybe you are quick to message your partner and you answer calls in front of your friends, no matter what you are doing. You simply cannot let that call go to voicemail and you have to call them back in a couple of seconds if you have missed the call. The next sign is you give too much as a test. Maybe you find yourself testing your partner. Maybe you know that they are not a present buying person and that they are not too bothered with Valentine's Day, yet you still make the effort. You spend your money and you know that they will not match this level of gift buying, yet you still do it and let yourself feel disappointed. Maybe you even already agreed that you would not exchange presents, but you do it anyway. If you have behavior like this, deep down your anxiety of keeping your partner happy makes you overcompensate with gifts or behaviors. You can't let go of things. Bringing the past into the present is one way to ruin a relationship. If you find that you are unable to deal with a past situation and you end up bringing it into the present moment, you end up focusing so much energy on it, you actually miss out on what's really happening around you. A past issue could be a childhood trauma or even something that your partner did in the past. You need to work through leaving the past in the past and not making future decisions based on a a current present moment anxious thought. Maybe you find yourself constantly bringing up the same past points and arguments and your partner's like, why are you bringing this up again? Overthinking. Does your partner tell you that you quickly jump to conclusions? Maybe they tell you that you always notice the worst in them and never the good. If so, it's a sign that you are assuming he will hurt you. And this mm -mm, is no way to live your life. Waiting for the next time someone hurts you is never a good way of living. So rather than constantly keep an eye on his phone screen whilst you sit next to him, relax, trust him, he won't be cheating and enjoy the present moment with him. In 
instead of continuously scanning for the negatives, which leads me to finding it hard to trust. If you do, you will easily assume the worst, constantly suspicious of your partner's behavior, the way that he says things and assuming he is up to no good because maybe simply he arrived home late from work last night. If your partner feels that they have to overcompensate their behavior and walk on eggshells around you, well, eventually they are gonna fall out of love with you and want to break things off. You date emotionally unavailable men. This may be a shocker and something you've never considered before, but have a think about all of your ex-partners. Were they always a little too distant, physically away in long distance relationships, or maybe they were not a fan of intimacy and the relationship never really went the distance? Well, it could be down to your attachment style. If you are the anxiously attached person, it means you will naturally be attracted to the avoidant type of guy. That's because you know you will never have that intimate depth where you can actually open up and be vulnerable with someone. Therefore, you subconsciously date guys that only seem to reach that surface level relationship. You struggle to talk about your feelings. So instead of telling your partner how you feel or even how you want them to treat you, you don't say anything at all and you bottle it up. Maybe you become passive aggressive and you depend on indirect, non-verbal forms of communication to get your partner to soothe you. Being vulnerable, it's scary. It's a fear we all have, I promise. But if you can't tell your partner how you actually feel, well then the relationship will never feel emotionally satisfying and your partner will get fed up of those mind games and the passive controlling behavior. You have a secret exit plan. If in the back of your head, you know that you could have another guy to go out with if things don't work out with your current partner, or maybe you immediately surf the web for plane tickets to move to a foreign country whenever you guys have a bad argument. If you do this, this is not good. It means you focus your attention on leaving rather than building up and maintaining and fixing the relationship. So maybe you shut down that relationship immediately and you do that to remove any emotional attachment to avoid you feeling any pain pain because you have these uncomfortable, anxious feelings. Constant criticism. Does it feel as though your partner always does the wrong thing? Maybe you take everything they do personally. Like, oh, he left the cupboard door open again in the kitchen. He knows how much I hate that. He's doing it on purpose. It's very disrespectful. That type of thought pattern is actually not healthy. Eventually, those endless criticisms and the nagging that you bring towards your partner is gonna wear him down. He can only take on so much before he feels he can never do anything right, so there's no point in him even trying anymore. You emotionally withdraw. Do you have moments where you feel that you are cured of your anxiety? You have no feelings at all and you feel kind of cold. If you feel this way after arguments or moments where you feel let down by your partner, it means you have emotionally withdrawn yourself from the relationship and slightly dissociated. And it could be a sign that you are trying to punish them through silence. Now, no relationship can ever progress if you are not emotionally present in every moment you are super clingy. Like I mentioned before, you are always there. You answer your phone on the first ring. Now these are signs of clinginess, but have you ever focused on your behavior when around your partner? Maybe you feel you have to always be touching and cuddling. You are offended if they turn down sex because they are tired. You need to know his phone passcode. You automatically invite yourself out on boys nights out basically not giving him any mental or physical space. There you go, ladies. Let me know what you thought of today's video down in the comments below, and I will see you soon. Like and subscribe.